Now, moving on to something that is absolutely disgusting, in my view, reprehensible and should not be allowed. Prolific serial killer Levi Belfield is going to be allowed to get married in prison as it stands. Belfield is serving two whole life orders for killing 13-year-old Millie Dowler, Marsha McDonnell and Amelie Delagrange. He is the only man in Britain to ever be given two whole life orders. It's also reported he's won a bid to be given £30,000 in legal aid to challenge the initial decision to block his marriage. Couldn't make it up. Should prisoners be allowed to marry? Or is this another example of our softness when it comes to crime and serial killers? Joining me now is Nadia Essex, dating coach, and Peter Blexley, former Met detective. Nadia, are you going to defend this man's right to... this serial killer's right to marry? Well, I mean, I, look, it's, it's a very, very difficult subject, obviously, because, you know, it's very emotive and there's lots of different aspects at play here. Um, and, and really, more than anything, you know, it, if, if, it's, if he's legally allowed to, then he's legally allowed to. And, and whoever makes the laws, if that needs to be changed, then that needs to be changed. Um, but I, I just worry more for the welfare of the woman because, you know, she must... I wonder how sort of mentally stable she is that she thinks that this is an appropriate thing to do. And I think that it should be, you know, as long as things have to be well fed all the way down the line and to make sure that her welfare is the number one priority, to make sure that she's not being manipulated, she's not being, um, you know, abused in terms of emotional abuse to suck her in. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's very, very tough because yeah. ultimately... That particular case, you'd think no, but in general, when people are in prison, if they fall in love, then in theory, you know, you'd think to yourself, Nadia, mm, just on maybe, that, on but that I mean, point, you're, he's you're obviously a child killer, it's very different. You're a, you're a dating expert. What type of woman wants to marry a serial killer who is banged up? Because there is. This is a thing that we see in society. I've watched documentaries on it over in the States, usually. People, you know, being attracted to men who are incarcerated. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it just, I mean, it's not even... People think, oh, it's, you know, vulnerable women or, or women that... that um, you know, I don't know, need their heads checked or whatever, but it can happen. I mean, mm. you know, we've got, a, in this country, Lauren Goodyear fell in love with the guy that she fell in love with and he was in prison. And it just starts off with, you know, uh, writing or on the phone mm. and you can fall in love with someone that way. So it's not necessarily vulnerable women all the time, Yeah, but we just have to make sure if, the, if they're going to get married, then there's got to be massive welfare. Very odd indeed. Peter... Uh, I mean, this is just ludicrous, isn't it, really, that a serial killer could possibly be allowed to marry while they're serving whole life sentences, multiple whole life sentences. The law needs to change here. Do prisoners, do serial killers deserve their human rights? With rights come responsibilities. And there is a responsibility upon us all not to prowl the streets and murder brilliant young women and defenceless children. And that's what this monster did. And I'm also going to mention the utterly heroic Kate Sheedy, who Belfield also tried to kill, but fortunately failed. And despite her injuries and the trauma, she got up in the witness box at the Old Bailey and courageously gave so much evidence which went a long way to ensuring that Belfield will never taste freedom again. I call upon Alex Chalk MP, the Lord Chancellor, or any other sitting MP to put before the Commons tomorrow a one-line bill which reads simply, people serving life sentences should not be allowed to marry whilst in jail. That's it. A one-line law. Get everybody behind it in the Commons, get it through before the summer recess and get it on the statute book. I mean, Peter, I think that would probably be the most popular bill ever put before Parliament, I imagine. I think people reading and reminding themselves of this man's heinous crimes will completely agree with you. But just on the general point about prisoners and their human rights, do you think that we are too soft when it comes to inmates? Do you think that they have too many human rights or is this really important for us to be um, to be a uh, uh, well a fine society essentially do we need to give prisoners their human rights in order to uphold that 
In the majority of cases, punishment without rehabilitation is a complete and utter waste of time. But Belfield will die in prison. He yeah. cannot be rehabilitated. He is beyond the pale. He is subhuman. He is a monster. He lost any rights whatsoever when he prowled the streets murdering young women and children on multiple occasions. He's a monster. I have absolutely no concerns about his rights. Mm. But, of course, other prisoners serving lesser, lesser sentences very much do need to be rehabilitated. So when the day that they are released does come around, they can re-enter yeah. society and become contributing members of the public. That sounds a lot like common sense, Peter. Thank you very much indeed. Sorry, that's all we've got time for. A little bit squeezed there. Nadia Essex, dating coach, and Peter Blexley, former Met detective. Thank you very much indeed. Now.